Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Is Daily Monday with Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon. This is for Monday, January 15th, 2018. Believe it or not, this is episode 14 already. We're up to episode 14 already. What do you think of that? Get the hell out of here. I kid you not. This is episode 14. I, well, I mean, dude. Of which show? show? Four days a week. Of, All of, of which show? Daily. Oh. Even oh. in all of its manifestations and its earlier manifestation, which is it's inheriting. It's kind of like uh, the Baltimore. Well, no, that's not a good example because the Baltimore Ravens, they were the Cleveland Browns. Then they moved to Baltimore. They became the Baltimore Ravens. But then they lost. Never mind. That's not a good. You know what? Just just go with it. It's the 14th episode of Is Daily. On this episode of Is Daily Monday with Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon. On Full Auto, we're going to be talking, and that's what we're going to be heading to next. We're going to be talking the Keystone gun rights fiasco or conspiracy. And on iWorld, we're going to get to, I guess, really, that's our top story. But we're going to make our top story our second story. And that is Rahava will be the death of us all or keep your hands off the Kurds. And on iPrepper... Reduce your dollar dependency. Are you, I, I'm assuming that you've been looking at everything and you got it all lined up and you read all the articles and you did your homework and you've got all kinds of knowledge to drop on the team. Is that is that a correct assessment? Am I inaccurate in my assumptions? Oh, yeah, are, yeah. Are you even yeah. on the show? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I'm awake. What was that Actually, middle part? What was that, that middle, middle part, part you said? I don't remember. I, I think I, I think the middle part was shut the up. I think that's <laughs> I think that's what it was. I actually had a really cool, uh, interesting time. I got to watch my daughter for the first time ever. My daughter recited a poem that she wrote in front of, I guess, about fifty or sixty people there. So that was a proud dad moment because. You know, I was prepared wait, to be a it, proud debt. What's that? Was it a kid poem like my dog's tail wags? No. My dog no. is a, you know, kind of poem. Okay, I went there prepared to hear. I, I thought it would be. I mean, she's a rhymey. So talented. I thought it would be rhymy. And I thought it would be kind of Pollyannish, not like too rainbowy. She's not really a rainbowy type gal. You know, my daughter. She's not a rainbowy type of gal. But uh, I, I I went into it thinking, hey, I'm probably going to like it. It's going to be good. Okay. And I, and you know what? Above all else, I'm just going to be proud that she got up there and she delivered a poem in front of all these people. But, hey, not only did it not suck, it was pretty good. Like, really good. Ooh. Like, when I was 13, I couldn't have written something that good good. And I was a poet for years, so... So it's a proud dad moment as a poet, seeing his daughter. I, she's a voice. She's got a real poet's ear. So it was a proud moment. I guess I guess we'll get to the show now. What do you say? Congratulations. That's pretty I awesome. have something to share, too, and it's, this is important. Oh, go ahead. I ate potato chips for the show, and they're stuck in my teeth. <laughs> Are you proud? Are you proud I of am. yourself? But you I'm have... doing this contortions, like, Wow, that I get that with popcorn, not potato chips. That's oh, it's nuts! It's driving I me nuts. I only eat so much popcorn. I'm like, no, I ain't gonna risk it. I went this far without getting something lobbed in a place. So you, you know, you just keep picking and picking, and you feel mm. it, and you're like, oh yeah, I can feel it with my tongue. It's sticking out. I know it. And you put your finger, and your finger can't find it. Your tongue can find it, but your finger can't find it. What's up with right? that? I don't know. That but... is, I think that is, should be like the title of a book. My tongue can find it, but my finger, well, my finger can't. can't. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been the title of the show, but I titled the shows in advance. Maybe I should stop doing that. I'm going to play the bump, and we're going to get into full auto. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to enter a gun-filled zone. Don't let yourself be triggered by the sound of Fool Auto. News about guns for gun 
supporters. That's right. Welcome to Fool Auto, which used to be a whole show, and then it was gobbled up by Is Daily, and now it's a segment on a show, which is cool, right? You're cool with that? What was that middle part? What was what middle part? That middle part, you just could you just repeat that middle part? Oh, oh, you're gonna do this throughout the show. This is a thing of yours now. It took me a little bit to pick up on it because you was... doing it before the show. You don't remember A Fish Called Wanda? That one annoying character? I remember the movie. I watched the movie, but I was like, I was a younger individual at the time. Well, there's a, there are several scenes where one of the main characters. Auto? Who, Is that an auto line? It's got to be an auto line. I think line. so. It's like, uh, no, I was listening. Just that middle part. Can you repeat that middle part? <laughs> <laughs> I got to do, I got to try that. And you know, that's a, you think about it. That's a good strategy because if they repeat the middle part, you know, the middle kind of straddles the beginning and the end. You can, you have a right. better chance of figuring out what they said. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that. So we're going to get to something serious now. If you'd like to. Uh-oh. Curds we're and whey. talk about, you, you brought this to my attention. And as it so happened, I actually had another version of the story in the queue. So relate how you came across this story and how you how you came to share it and what you what you thought about it which one which one are you starting the Pennsylvania with Pennsylvania story oh, the Pennsylvania I was driving to work the, and the, the opioid one of the emergency local... declaration yeah I was driving to work and one of the local radio talk show hosts had uh, a lawyer on who is um, the head of a organization and a blog here in Pennsylvania and they were talking about how in a state of emergency in Pennsylvania, if you if it is a declared state of emergency, you are not allowed to walk around with a gun. And it's an open carry state. But under those conditions, you cannot open carry. And I was like, well, that's interesting because it's usually in a state of emergency that I might want or need to carry a gun if the police and other um, governmental big daddy kind of institutions are going to come and help me. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if they can't, then yeah, I want to be able to pack heat. So, uh, during the course of their conversation, they mentioned that there were 16, um, 16 exemptions from this law. Uh, one of them being if you conceal carry, but as the law is written and as it has been interpreted in the past, you have to show up to court after you, during your prosecution and defend yourself with the law and say, well, no, I have a permit to conceal carry. Well, no, it was a X, Y, Z circumstance, or I was a police officer, or I was responding to a crime. You have to, you have the weight of proving your innocence. You're not innocent until proven guilty if I understood the, the conversation properly. So then I called Paul and left a message with some details and Paul ignored my phone call like he usually does. So I started blasting him with text after text after text right. uh, to wake up because it was late in the morning and it's time to get to work. And right. finally he responded like sometime in mid, after right. in mid afternoon after he got his, his nappy on. Right. And it, Paul brought something else into the conversation, which I would like Paul to discuss. So the, as it so happened, I actually had a story in my queue to, to cover in iState.tv. And the headline of that story was, did PA just lose their open carry gun rights? And I wrote, I probably wrote this as you were frantically texting me about the loss of all of our gun rights. Did Governor Tom Wolf just cancel PA residents' rights to openly carry firearms, making it a felony? Well, the back and forth continues between a PA Republican lawmaker and Governor Wolf's office over whether a state of emergency declared by Tom Wolf to address an opioid crisis means that people can no longer open carry in PA. And so then there were two stories that were shared here. And one is uh, from Penn Live, Wolf Wagner feud over whether 
opioid emergency violates gun rights. So this guy, this Wagner dude said, uh, while some were finding publicly, public policy fault with Governor Wolf's emergency declaration, GOP, ah, okay, so he's a GOP gubernatorial hopeful, Scott Wagner, okay. Um, uh, uh, so he said, digging deep into, stat, into the statute, into the state statute, the York County lawmaker says Wolf's declaration, which was intended to ease bureaucratic hurdles, blah, blah, uh, was going to make it easier to fight one of the great public health crises of our time, violates the Second Amendment right to uh, uh, bear arms. So the chapter and verse, Title 18 of, st of state statutes, which is where crime stuff resides. That's their wording, not mine. States that no person shall carry a firearm upon the public streets or upon any public property during an emergency proclaimed by a state or municipal government executive. Uh, Wagner's campaign helpfully pointed, <laughs> helpfully pointed out in an email blast. So then Governor Tom Wolf's office on Thursday reviewed the claims, and on Wednesday he signed the 90-day uh, disaster declaration uh, and then he said oh where is it here oh man can't find it uh, so oh, uh, essentially the, I, I, I don't know what happened to the quote the, the wolf aids and government will said no no this isn't going to affect any of that there's, there's, there's no danger of uh, any, any of that happening uh, so the debate here is about whether Tom Wolf's emergency declaration affects gun rights or not. And my question is, um, why aren't people asking an even deeper question, which is, wait a second, why do you have a state statute that prevents people from openly carrying during a state of emergency? Why? Why do people in Pennsylvania... Do they do they know this exists? This is the, I mean I live in Pennsylvania. It's the first time I've actually heard of this. So now that you know it exists, is this is this a law that you intend on obeying during a state of emergency? And how are you going to respond if uh, somebody tries to take your gun away because of this this Title eighteen whatever statute? And is this the same kind of statute that existed in Louisiana during the hurricane where they went? street to street, house to house, town to town, um, confiscating people's guns. It, it is. It's exactly. That's, that's and when did that get, and when did that get into the, I mean, when were these last, when were these laws passed? Like, that's a good question. And nobody's asking that question. The, all the all the dialogue among the mainstream media is, and 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 as you were listening on the radio show, was anybody challenging? No, the not law at all. Itself? No. All they were challenging was whether this applies in this in this situation or not. And you know, Governor Wolf is running for re-election soon, so he doesn't want to be seen in the state of Pennsylvania like he's like militantly anti-gun. Don't, you don't want to do that in Pennsylvania. It's not good. So, so obviously his Republican contender is using this as a as a wedge issue. You'd say, dude, he's dangerous. Come on, man. Look, look what he's doing. Meanwhile, the guy's not standing up. The Republican is not standing up and say, why does this statute exist in the first place? Why is it to the state? I mean. Well, okay, maybe it's um, maybe they're thinking that in a state of emergency, we'll have the National Guard in place and everyone will be safe from all those bad people and bad things that can happen to you. How many how many people are in the National Guard? Mm. The National Guard? A lot. Like a lot. Like, like 50 million? or 60. 50 <laughs> yeah. or 60 at least. Yeah. Maybe 70. You, let me find out uh, uh, the size of Pennsylvania. Are you actually going to Google it? Yeah, it's I'm got Googling. A couple hundred right thousand. Size of PA National yeah. Guard. Go That's what it. it's there for, man. Let's see. Uh, oh, come on. Tell me the size. 
How many people are in the Pennsylvania National Guard? So Wikipedia has an interest, entrance for the Pennsylvania National Guard, but it does not list how many people. Oh, okay, here we go. Size, full-time, 3,500. Part-time, 1,500. So that means you got 18,000 people in the Pennsylvania National Guard. Hey, okay. that's one for every city and town in the state. Right. Uh, what's, what's the population Dude. of PA? Let's, let's do the population of PA there, there sir. Is it like 10 mil? Population mil? of PA, 12.7 12. million. Okay. So, so like I, said. I guess it's going to be the state police and the municipals or whatever. But I, either way. The fact that you have a law on the books that at a time when people most need their guns, when when you have a when you have a an instability for whatever reason that is occurring, and and you don't have you you have a perception. I'm going to say perception because perception kind of makes reality here. When you have a perception that law and order is broken down, uh, that that's. That's that's when you're gonna want to make sure you got some tools for self defense. At that moment in time, that's when the state has decided that no, you, we can't trust you. You're too immature. You're too much of a baby to be able to have tools for self defense during a state of emergency. Now that conversation isn't happening. The only conversation that is happening is is this is this what this opioid emergency does or 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 doesn't do but it is interesting this is the second time in the span of maybe two weeks that governor tom wolf has had to come out sounding like he was pro-gun he had to do it with the marijuana license thing where the pennsylvania state police decided to to issue a a helpful reminder to the citizens that have a, a a Pennsylvania marijuana medical card that they needed to consult with their lawyer to figure out the best way to turn in their guns. And then Tom Wolf was like, no, 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 man. They can keep their guns. <laughs> it was so funny. But wait, wait. What I don't understand <laughs> is, is this law? Or is this people just spouting out what they want? Because if it's law, then they have to turn it in. If it's not law... Then what the hell is the state the state police doing telling people to turn in their guns? So which it's, is it? It's not state law; it's federal law. Ew. So the Pennsylvania State Police are citing federal law, and you have one branch Ew. of Pennsylvania government not wanting to play along with the other branch of Pennsylvania government. That's what's going on here. Oh, that's yeah. very interesting, isn't it? That's, no. uh, what's really so is this so is this a governor who is now um, choosing to ignore federal law? Uh -oh. yes. Yeah, this is a governor now choosing to avoid federal law. Uh, this is a bad precedent. Is it? Why? I'm just I being mean, a... From whose perspective is this a bad person? I know you're being persnickety there. Yeah. Uh, from very bad perspective. From is this a bad from Daddy Gov? Daddy Gov from loves which Daddy. It's... Apparently, there are more than one daddies, and not all daddies agree. Well, if there's more than one daddy, then mommy, mommy got around. Mommy Gov got around. So mommy Gov got around. Mommy you know what I'm saying? Got around. She so, had a she had an itch, and she needed so still, it scratched. This, this this Pennsylvania Democrat, well. Pennsylvania this Democrat uh, who yeah he, he he you know he ran in a state in which you know he talked about common sense gun control but he didn't push it too hard and the reason he didn't push it too hard is because he's running in the state of Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania is basically it's Philadelphia Pittsburgh Harrisburg York and then the rest of the state no, Lehigh Valley's part of that. And Le Lehigh Valley's very mixed. Very, Is very it mixed. very mixed? Yes. Lehigh Valley. Yeah. I, I, I live in the Lehigh Valley. It's very you mixed. You do? Yeah. Oh. It's very mixed. It's, oh. it's, it's, uh, 
It's 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 interesting in that it has a very sizable contingent of very active, what you would call far left activists, but it also has a very active contingent of far right activists. It's a very mixed community. It's not Philadelphia. It's not Pittsburgh. It's oh, not Philadelphia, it ain't. Democrat. But, yeah, but everybody ninety percent Democrat. Yeah, but it seems like the the Democrats run the show in Lilia Valley. The Democrats run the show in Tioga County, PA. And Tioga County, PA is like 70% conservative because it's the Democrats, it's the people who have the Democratic mindset that get involved in government in, in, in that local level in the first place. Most conservatives are not terribly interested in becoming too heavily involved in local business or local politics so you get a lot of people that they use the republican name but they're they have the the government mindset whatever you want to call it so they they walk like democrats they talk like democrats well no they don't talk like democrats they walk like no they don't even walk no 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 they walk like democrats they don't talk like democrats and they definitely totally act like democrats but not when you're watching you know they got all kinds of pesky little ordinances and and all that stuff so but in point of fact so, you're not going to get very far in state level politics in Pennsylvania if you are openly anti gun so but so if someone is taking medical marijuana the federal government wants you to turn in your guns how is that constitutional to be taking a medicine I mean, it's been declared a medicine, correct? Because it's, it's not, not been declared a medicine by the federal government. The federal oh, it government hasn't. still consider, considers it a felony crime. So you have Pennsylvania so, law which saying it's not a felony crime to use marijuana for medicinal purposes. And the federal government is saying it doesn't matter why you use marijuana. It's uh, it's a felony. So, uh, so, so the guns. federal government wants you to give up your guns if no, you're a Pennsylvania criminal. Pennsylvania State Police. Wait, I'm confused. The federal government didn't. Eat, the federal government didn't say anything about this. This is purely the Pennsylvania State Police who took their own initiative to put this up on their website, that and fe featured it prominently. Pro prominently, that with the new Pennsylvania law change, you want to make sure that you consult with your lawyer to figure out how to turn in your guns because this is a violation of federal law, so you have to turn in your guns. So they're saying that because you use weed, you're a criminal and you should turn in your guns. Yeah. So why didn't they put out something saying because you um, go over the speed limit, you're a criminal and you should turn in your guns? Well, because this is drug thing. So if you if you're if you're doing a drug crime then that means how about if you're guns. if you have murdered someone you should just turn in your guns well because that's a crime yeah, too that that would be true i think that's already on the law books if is this like murder wait, you can't own guns is this like one of those stupid, a, a law yeah is this like one of those ads that somebody puts in a paper saying look the um the mess that has been flowing into connecticut uh, New York and New Jersey uh, came from some tropical areas and it's loaded with the Zika virus. And if you have received meth from any of these, the following countries, you should take your meth to the nearest police station so that it can be tested to make sure that it's not loaded with the Zika virus because we care about your health. Is it like one of those things? Yeah, it's, it's Kind of like one of those things, definitely. Because so, this sounds like a joke. There's how? Where is the law written that if you're breaking the law by smoking an illegal substance, you should consider turning in your guns? What? Who I, the, I don't know. Is all, it this? All, was this at the federal level, or is this at the state level that there's a law that exists, or is federal. the state police just mas making this shit up? State police are citing federal law, so the state, poli state police are pledging their allegiance to enforce federal law, even though federal law 
does not align with state law, and they are state police and not federal police. So uh, I, good luck. Good luck, state police. I don't think anybody around you is going to support you if you actually send out state police to try to confiscate guns. Good luck with that. It's 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 going to be bad. You know, the interesting, I mean, people who don't even, they, they don't want marijuana, they don't smoke marijuana, they don't care about marijuana, they don't want to see police showing up confiscating guns of people to smoke weed. They, they don't want it. And and the local police, they're not going to want to be part of that, for the most part. The only the only type the only police that will comply with this will be police in 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 metropolitan areas like Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, possibly. I don't know if anybody's from Pittsburgh or Philly that's listening. You can tell me what you think, but I'm suspecting that they might follow the state police lead. But I can't imagine the state police show up in a local jurisdiction and try to go to somebody's home that the local police are going to be very happy about it. So they're, they are, as you, as the saying goes, they are farting into the wind as far as I see it. And they should just continue to toot, toot, toot away. Governor Wolf doesn't want this. The Democrat leadership doesn't want this. The Republican leadership doesn't want this. Nobody well, you wants know, this. Well, you know why they don't want this. Because half of their constituency smokes weed on the weekends, dude. I mean, if if the state police are going to go start rounding up people who smoke weed, who's going to be left to vote for the Democrats? I mean, come on. I think there's plenty of Republicans that smoke <laughs> weed. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, so I think I think I think we're done with this, and uh, because we got started off kind of late, normally. Did I ruin it? Off. Did I ruin no. it with that joke? Is that what no. you're saying? Did you no. hurt my feelings? Could you repeat the thing in the middle? Did, did you? Did I ruin the joke? Did, no. Did I ruin the show with my joke? No, no. I just want to know if you could repeat the thing in the middle. That's all I want. I'm to know. guessing at this point. I don't remember the thing in the middle. Okay. I'm guessing. Okay. So uh, we're going to go to our next segment rather than go to our break. We're just going to go to our. Uh, Let's knock this break. out. Let's do this. Hey, that's what I say. Let's knock this out. Let's punch this puppy out. I had a long day, man. Let's kick Let's this kitten. This. I like this. Let's kick, kick this kitten you better than punch the puppy in the kitten? head. I kind of like that. I like let's punch yeah. this puppy in the head. But, you know, to each his own. We're going to go to our next story. I'm going to play the bump for the next segment. What are the stories that more fully reveal the unfolding reality of power at a global level? Well, that's what iWorld is for. So get ready to look behind the global curtain to see who's really pulling the levers. To see who's really pulling the levers. That's what we're talking about here. Who's really pulling the levers? And, and we got a good topic today to talk just about that. Who is really pulling the levers? Because we're going to be talking about Turks clash with U.S. Russian policies over Rahavan Kurds. You know anything about this? Not very much at all. I've kind of been taking a nap through this. I got to really? say, yeah. Can you, why don't you start? Okay. Get me going. Okay, so Rahava is a region in northern Syria. And uh, Rahava may very well be the linchpin in the Middle East that, well... I think it could potentially trigger a global war. It could lead to the disintegration of the Russian-Turkish-Iranian alliance. Or it could lead to a forced peace that would see Turkey's imperialistic ambitions held in check for quite some time. And I know you're nodding your head in disagreement there, in, in snobby little disagreement. So... Uh, I'll just give a, a quick background here. Rahaba is mostly comprised of Syrian Kurds who, thanks to the Syrian civil war, took an opportunity to create a semi-autonomous region in northern Syria. So their existence is one that it's been supported by the Russians and even by the U.S., but not the Turks. And the Turks, they look at the Kurds as, as they're, they're a fundamental threat to their, he's putting the thumbs down to their ambitions to rebuild the Ottoman Empire and 
And then muddling up the whole affair was a possibility that France might soon be recon recognizing Rahava as a sovereign state. This is according to a guy named Thierry Mason, writing in VoltaireNet.org, who says, The principle of res judica, translators note, a matter that has already been ruled upon, ensured that the Rahava was automatically recognized as a sovereign and independent state. Historically, the Kurds are a nomadic people. They are like the gypsies in Europe, only a warlike version. Okay. They roam about in the valley of the Euphrates and can eventually cross the north of what is currently Syria. Okay. So basically basically saying, you know, because of this, that it's, it's already been decided by the French that Rahava is a state. So they're going to have to recognize it. So that could really muddle things up. Now, now Turkey. Do you have something to say? Because I have more. Yes. Can I interject one thing? Sure. The Kurds are an Indo-European people. Their language is Persiatic, not Turkic, not Arabic. It's not related to any of the um, Semitic languages from that area. So... They are culturally more closely related to the Persians and the Armenians than they are to their neighbors. And they've been there for a very long time. The other thing that's of, of note is that there are large populations of Kurds in Iran, in Iraq, in Syria, and in Turkey. And that is huge because they've never had their own country. Back to you, Paul. Right. So, back to Paul. So, now, the news headlines that are currently happening that makes this a story that we're talking about. So, so first, uh, from Al Jazeera, we get a report that Turkey will be launching an imminent strike in uh, against the, the, the Rahavans. Turkey's president vowed to purge terrorism across the border in Syria as Turkish forces pounded U.S.-backed fighters with artillery fire this past Sunday. A military operation in northern Syria against the city of Afrin, controlled by the Syri Syrian Kurdish armed group y YPG, will be launched in the days ahead, uh, President Erdogan qu was quoted as saying. He said the attack on Afrin will be an extension of the 2016 Euphrates Shield Operation which targeted, well, whatever, whatever it targeted. So Turkish soldiers are currently based in rebel-held territory on both sides of Afrin. In the coming days, God willing, we will continue with the Afrin operation that we started first with Euphrates Shield Operation to purge terrorism from our southern borders, Erdogan said in a speech in central Anatolian Tokat province. But then you get the other side of it. Can I interject? Really interesting. Can I interject something? The Turks view the Kurds as terrorists in the same way that they looked at the Armenians as terrorists because they wanted their own country, in the same way that they looked at the Greeks as terrorists because they wanted their own country and their own sovereignty, in the same way that they looked at the Bulgarians as terrorists, the Serbs as terrorists, the Egyptians as terrorists, the, the Syrians as terrorists. The Turks view anyone who is a threat to their little empire as terrorists so the Kurds are following a very old narrative in that part of the world that because they're fighting for their independence they're terrorists now Turkey does have a serious issue with the Kurds inside of Turkey of which there are tens of thousands um, because they want their independence from a country that has abused them and neglected them so by resisting the Turkish authorities, now they're terrorists. Please continue. Right. And so on the other side of that, on the other side of the news that you have, on one hand, the Turks saying, we're about ready to invade Rahava. Now, the part that they're uh, invading, Afrin, Rahava is like, it's not contiguous. There's a, there's a chunk on the eastern side, and then there's a chunk on the western side. And uh, the, uh, the Afrin chunk, it's a little chunk all by itself there. It's not Rahava proper, but it is 
Rahava. So on the other side of that, you get this news from Hurriyat Daily News. Uh, U.S. to use YPG militants for border security in Syria. Now, but Hurriyat, by the way, is a Turkish news source, so there you can take that however you want to take that. The U.S.-led coalition is working with a Syrian Kurdish group to set up a new border force of 30,000 personnel. The coalition set on January 14th a move that has added to Turkey's anger over U.S. support for the group in Syria. A senior Turkish official told Reuters the U.S. training of the new, quote, border security force, unquote, is a reason that the U.S. charged affair was summoned in Ankara on January 10th. The force, whose inaugural class is currently being trained, will be deployed at the borders of the area controlled by the Syrian Democratic Forces, made up mostly of the People's Protection Unit's militants. This is these are Rahavan security forces. So innocence. the big question is why does America want there are two actually there's three there are multiple many reasons but there's three very important reasons why the United States wants to work with the Kurds. Should I list them? Yeah. Number 1 and this may be the subject of a conversation that we have later today. The Turks have been arming terrorists throughout the Middle East who are aligned with the Muslim Brotherhood. And there was a ship captured by the Greek Coast Guard, a Turkish ship, heading to Libya last week, full of explosives and munitions coming from Turkey. Yeah, I and can, that doesn't... I, let me, I, th this is part of our story. Let me, let me go over yep. that real quick, the details, There's, if you'd like. Okay, let me just give the overview for these okay. three things, and then we'll okay. go back and touch upon them. Thank you. The second reason is because that area is going to be very important strategically in the next few years. There are pipelines supposed to go through there. The question is, who do you want to control these pipelines? Do you want Iran to control the pipelines, Russia to control the pipelines, Syria to control the pipelines, or Turkey to control the pipelines? All those countries are not friends with the West or Israel. So the United States, Western Europe, and Israel, it's to their benefit, and Saudi Arabia's, that the Kurds control those areas. Why? Because the Kurds are a new country, and they're going to be dependent tremendously from outside. And if they're dependent on the United States and Israel, they'll be very friendly to the United States and Israel. Got no choice. So, so correct. So, which leads into... The big reason number three, Turkey, Iran, Syria, they are all not friendly with Israel. And Israel needs a friend in the neighborhood. And if the Kurds can get their independence, they will be a force to be reckoned with if they're backed by Israel and the United States. And there are some sizable populations of Kurds inside of Turkey, inside of Iran and Iraq, and it would be to Israel's benefit strategically and tactically to, if the Kurds got their own country that went from Iran, which would be a buffer of Iran to, for Israel from Iran. And if that country went all the way into the Mediterranean, then they could control the pipelines coming out of the Kirkuk and those other areas. Those are the three reasons that and this I'll is so important. Yes, and I'll just touch real briefly on the, the story that you referenced here. And this is, this is, uh, where, there it is. So this is from Middle East Monitor. Greece intercepts ship carrying explosive material to Libya from Turkey. Greek authorities have reportedly seized a ship carrying potential explosive materials from Mersin in Turkey to Mizrata in Libya. The Hellenic Coast Guard headquarters confirmed to the Libya Herald that last Saturday a Greek lifeboat or Greek lifeguard boat, whatever that is, detected the Andromeda ship sailing off the 
Sea of Agios Nikolaos near the island of Crete under a Tanzanian flag. So the preliminary investigation found the ship's captain was instructed to go to the port of Mizrain to unload and deliver the cargo in breach of a UN, arm, UN arms embargo in place for Libya. And what they found on there was 29 containers of explosives. They found detonators and they re, they're calling it other equipment, including 11 empty liquefied petroleum gas tanks. So the Turks were trying to send, I'm, I'm sure that sending more stuff than that so well and and here's the thing the turks are currently monitoring the monitoring the border between turkey and syria and they've proven to be unreliable so the united states wants to get somebody in there who who they know will get the border locked down and the arms going into syria and which may become a threat to its neighbors like jordan and israel to get it locked down, it's, it's huge. The, the Turks oh, yeah. have been pumping weapons into that area to, to their surrogates, uh, surrogate fighters. So this is, uh, this is a, a pragmatic approach by the United States to try to close that border down. And who's the best candidate to do that? The Kurds. Yeah. The Kurds are in a position where they really need the United States. They're... Well, they're big time dem democracy. They're, they're they're direct democracy. So, uh, they're by U.S. standards, they're they're ultra moderate. They're 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 a secular government. <laughs> they're not even they're, they're 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 mostly Muslim, but they're very moderate version of Islam, and they believe in direct democracy. And if you go to iState.tv. And you do a search for Rahava. We got all kinds of stuff on our site about what's going on in Rahava and why why well, it's a region that in, interests us. And here, it's, here's, it doesn't have to do with the U.S. policy. Here's one little thing that they do that is that's very telling about what their culture is like. They have women in frontline fighting positions, which is very uncommon. In the Middle East, it's uh, not heard of outside of Israel. In the Middle East, and to a Muslim warrior, if you are killed by a woman, you go straight to hell. So, yeah, you didn't know that, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting factoid. But An interesting factoid. They are playing that up like crazy because their women fight alongside the men. And they kill people, and the the people they're fighting against are so such fundamentalists. They're terrified against going up against these Kurds because they're shoot women are shooting at them, and they don't know if that bullet is going to that they receive is going to cause them to to see the virgins in heaven or go straight to hell. And we actually covered a story just recently in which what we were talking about was uh, male-centered cultures clash with feminists of Rahava. Rahavans are feminists. They're not like over here. They're not like American feminists. They're, they're not going to be screeching up and down the roads? No, no, no. They're going to be no, carrying, no. They're gonna be they're carrying not, Kalishnikovs they're up and down the roads. They're not going to be wearing pee hats. They're going to no? be wearing helmets, maybe, Uh but whatever you might think of feminism over here in America uh, and whatever you might think of patriarchy in America over in the Middle East, the patriarchy in the Middle East is absolutely undeniable. Okay, if, <laughs> really, if, you're, if you land splat dad and uh, splat dad, splat, splat dab, whatever. If you if you end up in the middle of uh, smack of many dab. Of, smack, smack dab is what I'm looking for, right? <laughs> I knew I'd get it. You're, no, you're worse than you got it for you're me. You're worse than I am. I am. So that that truly is a patriarchy, and that patriarchy is the source a lot of their hierarchies that they form, which are incredibly oppressive, not just to women but to a lot of folks. So the Rahavan strategy is one of the ways to break that hierarchy, to break that 
oppressive power structure is to go right after the heart of the matter, which is their patriarchal, their patriarchal culture. So the Rahavans, they're feminists. They're, they, they follow, uh, well, they really, there's, there's two, 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 two thought leaders that they come from. One is dead and one is alive. One of them is, a, is, a, is, a, is an American named Murray Bookchin, and he's, he's an anarchist. And he died, I think, like 10 some odd years ago. Uh, and his legacy has been kind of picked up by Abdullah Akalam. And uh, they believe that empowering women to be equal with man, fun men, fundamentally undermines the power hierarchy that is oppressing everyone else. But when they, that what they have is they have, they have these councils in which you basically, I mean, it's a direct democracy. Uh, everybody votes, uh, and you're voting for slots, and uh, certain certain slots have to be men, and certain women. It's fifty fifty, and there's two leaders. One is always a man, and one is always a woman. It's like they're walking side by side, very deliberately. And these feminists, as far as I can see, they're not anti male. They're not at all like they're. They're for masculinity. They're just for femininity, and they're also for allowing women to be whatever they want them to be. So these Arabs are coming into these camps uh, the, that are run by Rahavids, and they're learning things like, you know, if you strike a woman, you're gonna be, <laughs> it's going to be some bad stuff for you. You strike a woman in a Rahavid camp, and there's gonna be there's gonna be hell fire and fury coming down on you, so it's, I'm I mean it's a it's quite a fascinating experiment that's going on in there, and of course it figures that it's Turkey. I know how much you love Turkey. It's Turkey that's 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 maybe the biggest threat to the Rahavan experiment right now. That's it. You got more? Well, because because Turkey is a extremely patriarchal society. Um, oh yeah. It, it, the other problem is that these but I Kurds. Don't think, I I don't think the Turks care that much about the whole feminist Rahavan thing. I think they oh, care no. that power. They only see them as Kurds. Correct. Kurds, 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 Kurds taking land that they already have, and Kurds taking land that they want. And there are Arabic women who are learning from these oh, Kurdish yeah. women, and that's not good. It's not good. They're taking no. these ideas back because they're like... learning. Well, because these the Kurdish women are teaching the Arabic women how to shoot Kalishnikovs. Hey, honey, stop beating me, or I'll blow your brains out. That that actually means a lot. <laughs> yeah, for a Kurdish woman, feminism means you learn you learn to be your own power. For an American feminist, feminism means. Uh, uh, you learn to get the government to hand you power. That's not how Kurdish feminism works. So it's we well, got to respect them. I have a great oh, deal yeah. of respect for them. I, I I totally respect them. I'm rooting for them. That's why I track them all the time. I'm always it's I have a system that I use to track the kind of news that I track on iState.tv and Rahava. That's a topic that I'm checking regularly. I'm looking well, to find out what's going on on a daily basis. And the Turks have been trying to resupply uh, Libya with material and men. And going across the Mediterranean has proven tricky. It's tricky, trick, trick, tricky. It's fun to lock it. Never mind. Yes. Um, you know, every time you say tricky, you trigger that. I know it's it's hard not to every time. It's tricky, tricky, trick, tricky. Trick, trick. Sorry, so it's tricky to go across the Mediterranean. They keep getting busted. So what have they done? They have negotiated a, an agreement with, I believe it was Sudan, Sudan, for an island. Oh yes, yeah, Sudan in the Red Sudan, Sea. Yes. So now they're going to be moving men and material. To that island and across Sudan, they can get under Egypt and around Egypt and directly start to supply these people over land instead of over sea. 
Over land versus over sea. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, so Egypt, being in the neighborhood of Libya, is pissed. Saudi Arabia is pissed. Everyone who borders Turkey has started to figure out the dynamics of who and what they are and the they problem realistic yes they are and the problems that the entire neighborhood is going to face i think the united states and israel started figuring it out a few years ago uh the question is if turkey continues to lob uh mortars and artillery rounds into these kurdish areas there are american uh, special forces in these areas uh, training these people. What happens when one NATO country kills another NATO country's soldiers? Does one NATO country have to leave NATO? What are the ramifications of that? Or is there going to be a situation where one is going to be kissing the ass of the other, like with shooting down the Russian plane and saying, oh, we're so sorry. It was an accident. Yeah, even though we, at the time we said, yay, we're glad we shot it down. You know, it was a complete accident and a misunderstanding. Oh, yeah, they, they're like, they declared victory. They made videos, and but now it's an accident. Yeah, so, you know, a hot-headed, you know, young hot-headed Air Force, Air Force officer launched that missile that shot down that Russian airplane. So what happens when something similar to that happens with the United States? Do we suck it up or is it going to explode in the media and Trump's going to be like, yo, you went too far? Well, I think that uh, hmm, the dynamics being what they are, the, 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 the fundamental goal of the media is to take down Trump. That's all they care about. So what hurts Trump more? Whatever hurts Trump more, that's what they'll do in response. That's how the media will will highlight this. What would hurt well, Trump more? Bad relations with Turkey, a NATO ally, would probably hurt Trump more. So they're going to play that up like, look, Trump got us into this mess where Turkey had to bomb positions inside of Syria and it ended up killing American soldiers. Yeah, I, I think I think that the media will underplay it, and uh, I mean they're they're going to have to walk a fine line between, on one hand, blaming Trump for the catastrophe, and not trying to gin up the war drums, because the war drums will produce a wave of jingoistic fervor that will only help Trump. So, I think that if Turkey does that, the I don't think the U.S. will end up going to war with them over it. Oh, no. No, but they might. The ramifications for Turkey are not going to be good. Russia didn't go to war with Turkey after they shot down that plane. But it wasn't good for Turkey. It made them play, pay a, uh, a heavy economic price for, Correct. for a good amount of time. That they're Correct. still paying, actually. Correct. So the United States has serious leverage over Turkey. Uh, in its position with NATO, in its asp aspiration, its an ambition to join the European Union, which doesn't seem likely in the near future. Um, and then there was some talk of making Turkey some sort of like a preferred partner or something, and yeah. Turkey's like, that's not good enough, which I don't blame them, actually. Look, but I don't know why they want to be in at this point. To give you a perspective of the Turkish position, um, there were troubles on the island of Cyprus that were caused by both sides. And you can argue this, that, or the other, but there were some books written recently by uh, Turkish generals who were in charge of these troubles because they sent agents to Cyprus and they bombed mosques and post offices on the Turkish side and killed their own people to get their people against the Greeks, okay? So there, there was a, and then the Greeks retaliated for things that the Turks did, and it was a shit show. It really was. People were killing each other, and things got bad. Things but got now bad. that, 
yeah now now that the Turks created this problem helped create this problem and amplify it they invaded the island and took uh, a little over a third of the island they took the northern part the part closest to Turkey well off the southern part recently there's natural gas and oil that's been discovered in large amounts and even though they partitioned the island and said well you live your lives and we'll live our lives and we'll, de we'll declare ourselves a free country a free and independent country from the rest of Cyprus they did that but now they're demanding the oil and natural gas from the south that it be divvied up equitably based on population and geography well, wait a minute do you want to be independent of the island or do you not want to be independent of the island you've been pushing for independence all this time and you've been blocking reunification now that there's oil and natural gas and great wealth discovered there oh now you want you want a piece of it but you don't want to reunite that's like saying hey we found um we found uh oil and natural gas off of south korea's shores and north korea should be getting some of that for free because hey we're koreans too we live on the same peninsula we should get some of that don't you think you know there should be it should be it should be split equitably so this is the game that the turks are playing and they're not just playing it on cyprus they're playing it with the greek greeks in uh, the aegean they're playing it throughout the middle east in uh, syria in um iraq and they sure shit played it back in the early 20th century when they murdered 1.5 million Armenian Christians and took their lands. So when you say they have imperialistic ambitions, that is a very accurate statement. And I think we'll wrap this segment up on that note. And we're going to head right into the last segment here. I'm going to play the bump for the last segment. You know what it is? I prepper. So we're going something to be about, about something about money and something about money. Yeah, we're going not to having this, any like how do you uh, par, par, people in prepping a lot they talk about uh, you got to get this, you got to get that, you got to know how to do this, you got to know how. To, well, how about like in the here and now? And remember, when you and I when we talk about prepping, we're not just talking about SHTF. If you take a prepping mentality. It's also gearing you up to try to uh, enable yourself to more fully uh, be disentangled from the, the coercive enterprise around you. And surely one of the ways to do that is by, by reducing your monetary dependency. So we're going to be talking about that right now on iPrepper. Be the power you hope to see, and that means being prepared to provide, as much as possible, yourself and your loved ones with basic necessities. Welcome to iPrepper. Get ready to be prepared. And you didn't get to hear the bump. You didn't get to hear the iPrepper bump. What is that? You look, so, you look so happy to be here right now. You're so, so energized and warm. It's been a I long am... day for both of us, hasn't it? Well, oh for me, my it's God. been a long day. We had have had, adventures. I have actually, and my wife had a friend visit from college for, who used to go to college with her today. And yesterday we had family visit. And the day before that we had fr friends visit. And it's like, I love people, but I'm tired and need more sleep. I, I like individuals. I don't like groups of more than one. <laughs> Would that be yourself? Or yeah. someone else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, myself. <laughs> Groups no, actually, of my two. No, three. Oh. If it's me, my wife, and my daughter, that's cool. Okay. Okay. But start adding on to that. And then but dude, if my daughter's not around and it's just Den and I, then it's back down to two. What about your dog? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll add the him. He's people. Hamster? Like... No, no, I'm not gonna count. Oh, did the, the hamster hamsters, people? Did the I hamster will count die? the piggy though. I will count the piggy, the little guinea pig. I'll count him as. Oh, people. ham! You have a guinea pig. I thought you had a hamster. Sorry. I have a hamster too. By the way, having okay. a hamster and a guinea pig and a dog not the best way to reduce your monetary imprint. Because unless, 
unless you're feeding your dog hamsters and guinea pigs. Well, that's true. But because know, that then that's that's a resource. Just taking them. So let's get let's get to eight steps to stop overspending when you don't know where to start. And this list actually, uh, the detailed list can be found at the Simple Dollar. And if you go to isdaily.live, you can get access to all the archives of the shows. And when we're done with this show, we'll actually be embedding the Facebook video in the show notes. We'll also be embedding the YouTube video. And we'll also be embedding the audio. And I'm really going to be trying to push that audio a lot more. I'm really working on trying to build us up as an audio podcast. So, eight steps to overspending when you don't know where to start. Number one, number one they list is nip problem areas in the bud. One common culprit of overspending is plain old convenience. The fact that credit cards are so easy to use is one of the reasons people get into credit card debt after all. So, so there you go. So what you do is you remove the parts of your, like if you have credit cards, try to get rid of your credit cards. Uh, areas in your life where it's really, really easy to spend money, you try to avoid those areas. You got any more to add to that? You got some, some something. Leave your credit cards at home. Leave your credit cards. Now, if you're running a business, you pretty much need credit cards unless... Unless you started off with a whole lot of capital right in the beginning, you need credit at various times to float your business. What is that squeaking, squirking? That's you. You're squirking on me. Don't squirk on the show. Cut your squirking down. Number two. Don't squirk. I know you're going to as soon as I start talking. Number two. Set up rules to prevent impulse purchases and they and it says here tom Drake, canadian blogger and the founder of maple money says he used to have a weakness for impulse purchases i i have to i actually have some methods that i use there's always a new gadget to buy or a great sale going on he says if you're not actively limiting yourself it's far too easy to shop until you drop or mm. until you spend all your money and then some and i my, i go through the process go ahead I do too. I avoid the gun stores. Just don't yeah, go. Yeah, I got... <laughs> yes, don't, don't go. go. That's... Yes. That's... Don't go. And don't watch gun shows on YouTube because they'll be I like, do. oh, yeah, that's a good. Like three guns that I want to buy right this now. Is a, so... This is a niche that I really need. I, I yeah, don't have something off. for this one. I don't have yeah. this niche. What right. happens if the world goes nuclear and the 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 pole shift. And all right? we have left is 762 by 25, and I don't have a token if, if the pole shift and like Russia crashes into Canada, and like I can walk to Russia, and that's the only place where there's food because now it's tropical. Right. And I don't have a token off. Dude, what, Dude, they don't have 9 millimeter and 40 cal there and they 10 only millimeter. They have 762 by 25. That's or it. 18. But. You need right. a toe crawl. I mean, what if that scenario were to unfold tomorrow? You're screwed. You need to get yourself an AK, a toe crawl, uh, a dragon. You gotta off. have all the commie rounds. You gotta have all the commie rounds. Get, get, it, get all the com block stuff. You look, need it's it. irresponsible. It's irresponsible not yeah. to have something like that. And that's what so. you go through. That's how you end up doing an impulse purchase. Exactly. And then you're at the gun store and you're like, here it is. There's a toker off here. Okay, it's fifty dollars <laughs> more than I wanted to pay, but yes. what's fifty dollars? And, it, in and it's a little bit camp? in worse shape than I wanted, but it's here. But you can Cerakote it, and you can, you know, right. you can spend another couple hundred bucks making it look good. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. Know? What's money? I mean, the point oh, is wait, trying to save money. Wait, that's why you don't go to the gun store because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be you, you just you, you just don't go there. And no, no. I actually have a, a bit of a method that I use. It this doesn't work for guns, okay? I am powerless before guns. I still haven't figured out and yeah, his your advice is good. Just stay away from gun stores. But uh for other types of purchases, especially like I like collectibles. I like car collectibles and stuff like that. And then I what I do is I always, you know, as much as I love it, it looks so great. It's like, oh, wow, I love it. Like, okay, where do you really have to display that in a nice place? 
what are the chances that it's going to end up in a box down in the basement? And I think about the collectibles that I have in a box in the basement right now. And then that stops me. So that's my technique. Just for me, if I make it to a gun store, that's like a Mel DeMarcos in Manhattan in a shoe store. Yeah. It's just not good. Too. It's just not good. I'm going to get there's the no three. way there's no way you're going to walk out of there without a purchase. I'm going to get to number 3. Go. I don't want to be here all night. I'm tired. Go. I want to go to bed. Go. Switch to a cash only diet. While some people can use credit cards without racking up debt or spending too much, not everyone has the discipline, the desire, or the time to keep track of their purchase and their credit card balances. Uh, one way to avoid racking up debt is to switch to paying cash for everything. And I have to say, even if we're talking about bank cards, don't use your bank card. So what we've done in our house is we actually have a, a food budget and we have an envelope and we put money in the envelope for during each paycheck. So we know this is all the money that you can <coughs> spend on your food budget. And as it starts to get low, you got to make some hard decisions. And otherwise, we just end up spending $1,000 or whatever for food when we really should be spending 600 I may be a bit hyperbolic, but still. So, yeah, I highly recommend so, that. I have been in a gun store where I've We're been back in the gun store again and where I've had this conversation in my head, like, you know, the kids can't eat ramen noodles for a month. <laughs> right. Did I, you know, it got me through college. <laughs> ramen noodles, right. at Subway. They're I mean, a nutritional thing. Look, Subway. you make friends, ramen you make, noodles. Dude, you make friends with the guy behind the counter and he puts a couple extra slices of peppers on there, a little bit more lettuce, maybe a piece of meat extra. And you hook him up. With like you know, stuff that you don't need. Like, what do you hook them up with like, that you don't need? Friends, like you go to the garage. It's like drill press. <laughs> Who needs a drill press when you can get an AR? Kids eat ramen and at Subway. <laughs> yeah, I inherited the drill press. You know, it, it's not going to really help me with like fixing guns, right? <laughs> right. No, there's no way. There's no All way. Needs to drill fixing, press can... To fix a gun, all you need is a good file. Good file set. Good hammer, you're, you're, a file, a screwdriver. You don't need no stinking hammer. You got a shoe and you got a Duct nail. Tape. Duct tape. Dude. Duct so tape I'm just do. saying there are ways to uh, ways to save money. <laughs> I'm going to get to number four. Not time. I'm, I'm, be, I'm really interesting how you're going to get this back to the gun shop. That's the challenge. Number four. Oh, my. Look for ways to avoid temptation. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was this Sometimes... one time I was at a gun store. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Look for ways to avoid temptations. Kind of the same as uh, nip problem areas in the bud. I don't know what the distinction is there. Start using a budget. I definitely highly recommend that you use a budget. And we've already... We went to a budget. We saved about like three hundred a month immediately. One thing when you use when you go to a budget, then you start to find out all the things that you're spending money on. You're like, what the, what is this coming out every month? What does anybody even use this anymore? And uh, you know, I reduced our budget recently by about two hundred dollars because about two hundred dollars of things that we really don't need to be paying for anymore. Done, because we have a budget. Number six, set up a separate bank account for categories where you overspend. Wow, that seems like a lot of work. If there are areas of your budget where you always overdo it, setting up a separate account to cover those purchases, that's interesting. I, I don't know. That seems very involved. But I would say the areas that I would tend to overdo it would be groceries and eating out. Although we've been very good with eating out lately, but still. Groceries and eating out. You don't think about it. You just go. You're like, hey, man, let's go eat out. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to clean dishes. Dude, you know what's funny? When I was a kid, we may have eaten out once with my parents every six months. Maybe twice, three times a year at the most. Now it's like three times a week. Yeah, we used it's to funny like how. That. Until it's funny how culture has changed. Like once every two weeks. Oh, 
Yeah. Yeah, we cut it out. I mean, it's, it's so convenient, tough. so easy to to go eat out. But man, it boy, it really well, go eat out, order pizza in, man. It's easy. Or that, whatever. It's, yeah, it's but that's awesome. also you know you you buy you can spend a lot less money buying groceries if you do it right than even, than than buying. It's just the t- it's time. You're it's you're time, trading right. dollars and time. That's the bottom line. Well, we're we're I'm. We're, we haven't successfully made the transition, but I'm really trying to make a transition to, and I think it's good for health as well, is a lot more rice and bean meals. But rice mm-hmm. and beans are cheap. They're good. There's a lot of variety you can create with that, and uh, and they're cheap, and they're good, and they're healthy. Eat less meat. Not that I'm going to oh, stop eating meat. but I'm the, the opposite opinion. I, I like my meats. Sorry. I like my meats too. It's not that I don't like my meats. I love my meats. I could eat meat uh, three, four times a day at least. I like and my, finally, grilled, my grilled vegetables. Yeah, I've I've eaten your grilled vegetables. They're pretty good. And and them rice and beans, they these all right. Right, like you know how rice beans. is really good. It's like smothered in chili. That's good. Yeah, smothered in pot roast. That's good. Smothered, <laughs> smothered, smothered in pot roast, smothered, <laughs> smothered in, in steak, lobster stew. <laughs> That's how rice. Yeah, you kind, you're, you're kind of going off the trail here. Uh, finally, number eight: find cheaper ways to get what you want, and that's you know cut cut uh, coupons, find sales. Do the research. See who's selling. When you go to price. the gun store, you go to the used <laughs> gun there you go. cabinet. Okay. Find a way to get what you want within a cheaper way. Like right. you can pick up a good handgun for two hundred bucks used, maybe three. And you can yeah, pick you them up used. Usually pick up a good used handgun for two hundred bucks. Yep. You can get a toker off. Dude. You can get a new Ruger for like two hundred and sixty-five dollars. It's the semi-auto nine mil. But I want a token rob. What I want is for a company like Ruger or Smith and Wesson to make something chambered in a token rob in the seven six two by what's it twenty nine? If if they ever do that, dude, I'd be first in line. I would be lined up and yes, you know what I do? I had a choice if. I'd rack up my credit card. I'd get like 10 of those. <laughs> right. And I'd give one to like everyone I know. Like you'd get one. My brother would get one. Yes. You know, yes. See? Oh, man. I'd, get I'd, I'd do the same. I'd do the same. And my wife would yeah. be like, you know, that was irresponsible. <laughs> and she'd run out. And you'd be like, like, it's a toker off. They're cheap. Are you kidding me? Like, you can't, <laughs> you can't not buy one of these things. It's cheap. You it's can't. Cheap. I mean, they're only 200 bucks. Yes, but you, you bought... 40 of them. Actually, yeah, because they're cheap. The I Serbs saved a are, lot of money. Aren't the Serbs making them new now? They, uh, they're remanufactured. The I know they are being made new. And then they're like, they have to put a safety on them when they send them over to America. But yeah, they're being made new. But still, Wait, I would love to see I don't understand why gun designs to... chambered in that. Because it's. I mean, the Tokarov, the pistol itself, I mean, it's a fine pistol. There's nothing wrong with it. But, man, I would love oh. to see a modern gun chambered in 7.62 by 2.5. Oh, my gosh. That would be – you know what I'd love to see? Just – oh, it would totally trip me out. I want a double stack 7.62 by 2.5, 19.11. Of course, that's not possible. That I don't think that it would have enough to recycle. It would – Unless it's a hot really round. Of course it would. It's a very it hot goes round. It fast. I don't know what it's... It's got no recoil. So if it's got no recoil, that could be a problem. Oh, dude, uh, it's a hot little simple. round. It'll have plenty of recoil. Because don't forget, the Tokarov is a heavy old iron gun, just like the 1911. What so, I want to so see... Anyway. It, oh, so, so great. Like then the see, dream lives. Yeah. Then the dream I'd lives. Like, I want... Go ahead. I'd like to see a Glock or a Beretta or a Ruger... Or Sig Sauer, or anybody. A witness. A, a, a witness. Yeah, that would even that would even do it for me. That. Yes, yes. And on that note, we're we're at the end of our show. I I thought we were gonna have a short show. I think we ended up actually having a when, longish show. When do we ever so, have a short show? 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I so like, just let me share one personal oh gosh, story. We're going to be here for another about, few minutes. Go oh ahead. No, this will be quick. So my wife had this shoe problem. She would buy shoes. So what we what I did was I said, look, I'll go in and buy the shoes for you, and you go into the gun store and buy guns for me. And she would come out with stupid shit. Just stupid, stupid, like, what is this? She goes, and it looked nice. I liked it. So I'd buy, you know, like eight inch heels that, you know, porn stars would wear. Yeah. And I'd buy those for her. And so within a week, we stopped buying stuff. It worked really well. <laughs> yeah. What did she now, buy at the gun store? Huh? What did she buy at the gun store? Oh, she bought one of those stupid little guns that, um, that 007 has. Those things. Walther, look, P. Yeah. The Walther. Yeah. And the, and it had some like silver engravings and stuff on it. I was like, that's not a gun. That's like that's for a, girls. You bought this for me. That's a 380. It's like, but it looked pretty. And, and I said, same thing with the shoes. They look pretty. She goes, well, I can't say what she said. But she does wear them on occasion. I bet. You know. I don't want to, I don't want to know this. She does. I, don't, I know your wife. I don't want to picture her in eight inch heels and what that entails. I don't want that. Yeah, so striking that so, image from my head. Striking that image from my head. So she's her shoe thing has slowed down considerably, and my gun thing could slow down considerably because when you get a girl gun like that, you're like, what, what do I do with this thing? Yeah, but like, how about that Ruger? The range. How about how about that how about that Ruger nine millimeter takedown carbine? You see, but she would go in and she'd go, yeah, I, I want a Ruger 9mm, and they'd give her whatever, and it wouldn't be the car. They'd carb give her an LC9. And they, well, Which yeah, is a but, good gun. I have a LC9. It's a pretty but, good gun. So we stopped but it's not doing a that, carbine. and I don't, I don't get a lot of guns anymore, and she doesn't get a lot of shoes anymore. So it kind of works. So that's that's works. number nine. Have it's, somebody buy stuff for you that you that know, is they know nothing about. That is horribly disappointing. Yes, exactly. And, and, and the disappointment note, is so bitter. It's like, oh, you get, a girl gun. No. You, it should have been black and big and bulk. And it's like, it should have been blue. I mean, it's, it's baby a, blue. What the? Well, it, I thought it went with your eyes. It had this, why, did, why is it engraved with these like squirrely things and whirly things? Yeah, squirrely, whirly. And, you do not need squirrely, whirlies on your gun. That should be a law. <laughs> No, I'm if not you get laws, but I'd be for that law. If Those you get squirrely whirlies on your gun, you need to go get shots from the doctor. Right. You really need to get some attention Lots for that. Lots of penicillin shots repeatedly. Hell yeah! Place. So on that note, I'm glad I was able done. to help our listeners with the last bit of wisdom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hopefully, you'll be able to 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 reduce your monetary imprint. So we're gonna yes. we're gonna say goodbye here today today now, and uh, I, I'll ask you to join us. Well, join me tomorrow afternoon at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for headlines you may have missed. I, I actually put those on my Facebook page. So if you haven't tried to become friends with Paul Gordon, please do, unless you're really strange, in which case I probably won't accept your friend request anyway, if it's if I know. Uh, and we'll be back here tomorrow night. I'll be here with Bodhi Agora for is daily Tuesday and tomorrow night for the maybe the first maybe we'll switch things around we might do this for the first segment of the show we are going to address if, if I say this Professor Rambo I know you're going to go on another, another 20 minutes and talk about this but I'm, we're not going to do it we're going to address the Hawaii issue <coughs> that's what, I know I know I know I know. Yeah. Bodie and Agora, Bodie Agora and I will be talking about the Hawaii issue tomorrow. What happened? What does it mean? Yes. So on that note, do you have any last words that are not related to the Hawaii thing? You suck. <laughs> yes, I do. Trava All right. Sto Kalo. Which means go with goodness, go with goodness, go with goodness, everybody. This is Paul Gordon, and this has been Professor Rambo, and you've been watching His Daily Monday. We'll see you on His Daily Monday next Monday.
Adiós.